Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be doing my March TBR. I'm so excited because this is my birth month and I'm reading what I wanna read. I'm not following anything. I'm not doing my 24 and 24, nothing like that. I chose all of these books. I have seven. I have seven. Oh. I have seven books that I want to read. And they're all books that I have selected that I have had on my TBR that I wanted to read. I'm not, I'm not holding myself to anything. This is just going to be like a fun mood reading month because no discipline. I'm, no discipline. I guess I have to have discipline to not have discipline this month. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. So guys. I have seven books, like I just said, and they are all books that I want to read. I'm so excited. So first off, we have Magnolia Parks Into the Dark. Very, very scared. I'm frightened for this book. I am on page 84. I started it two days ago, but this weekend I was really busy. I've been traveling and I did not have any time to read. This book right here is so sad. It is. There's not one happy thing that's happened in this book yet. <laughs> and that, I think that's the gist because they are dealing with um, loss. I guess I can say that because it's on the back. I'll read the blurb so I'm not spoiling anything. How many loves do you actually get in a lifetime? Everyone knows by now that Manolia and BJ are in the stars, but is that enough? Reeling from a devastating loss, Magnolia Parks' life once again is thrown into disarray. The person who held her entire family together is gone. And suddenly secrets are unraveling and tensions are high as Magnolia and her fiance BJ Ballantyne plan what's been dubbed the wedding of the century. Things aren't going all that well for BJ either. Desperate to prove he's no longer the man who hurt Magnolia through their long years apart, BJ fights an uphill battle as he tries to bring their relationship into a healthy place. But with mounting secrets between them and their past finally coming to a head, there's only so much a relationship can handle. As Magnolia and BJ's love story hurdles to us in a vel Okay, I've read this blurb like 10 times because I did film this video like just before, but I didn't like the way like this light was hitting my face. And uh, inevitably, it's a, it's a war. It's a war. Okay, so. As Magnolia and BJ's love story hurdles into its inevitably dramatic conclusion, these two will finally learn whether they'll actually be together forever or die trying. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it says inevitably. And I have not, that's not a word you run across in the wild often. So I was tripping up on it and I really felt illiterate. But this is going to be my five star read. I already know. It might be six star. It might be my best book I've read this year. I'm only on page 84, but I already have all the high hopes for it. Next, we have The Deal by L. Kennedy, and I'm giving it a chance. I am, I am, I am, because I hated Icebreaker. I Y'all have heard me harp on Icebreaker and how bad it was, but The Deal sounds good, because I just read the book. She's about to make a deal with the college bad boy. Hannah Wells has finally found someone who turns her on, but while she might be confident in every other area of her life, she's carting around a full set of baggage when it comes to sex and education. If she wants to get her crush's attention, she'll have to step out of her comfort zone and make him take notice, even if it means tutoring the annoying, childish, cocky captain of the hockey team in exchange for a pretend date. And it's going to be oh so good. All Garrett Graham has ever wanted is to play professional hockey after graduation, but his plummeting GPA is threatening everything he's worked so hard for. If helping a sarcastic brunette make another guy jealous will lift his grades and secure his position on the team, he's all for it. But when one unexpected kiss leads to the wildest sex of both of their lives, it doesn't take long for Garrett to realize that pretend isn't going to cut it. Now he just has to convince Hannah that the man she wants looks a lot like him. This is a series that I want to read this year. I want to finish it. If I like this book, I'm going out and getting the rest of these in this cover because it's a very appropriate cover. Yeah. So if you know, you know. I have the sprayed edges. I like it. It was stiff, but the more I do this, the less it's like crinkly, I guess. But next we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout and I actually don't know much about this book. I'm going into it blind. This is the only book I'm going into blind this month because 
I just know that she's been held to like the standard and she doesn't want to be held to the standard because she wants to be doing something else. So basically she's going to go do that thing. And I don't need to know anything else because I know, I, I think I'm going to like it. I think I'm going to like it. But people do say, I think they say, I think they say that the second book is better than the first. But please don't quote me on it because I am wrong a lot. Yeah. Next we have Hotel 21 by Century Rich. And this one says, dark beginnings can also lead to intriguing possibilities and bright endings. Noelle is an efficient, friendly hotel cleaner, a model employee, or so she'd have you think. Trouble is, she can't help but take a little souvenirs from the room she cleans. Nothing of value, a lipstick, a hair clips, and some tweezers. By the time the guest has noticed, she's long gone. As Noelle begins work at her 21st hotel, she's determined to last longer than her record of one month on the job. But then she meets her new colleague. These women are real. They live lives full of happiness and worry, pain and joy. They make her wonder what it might be like to have true friends, people to stick around for, and someone to love. Will they give her the courage to claim the life she deserves or will her old habits come back to haunt her? This sounded so interesting when I was in the bookstore because it's like, I don't know, it's like a feel-good book. I don't, it's not like generally a romance, but I do think it's going to have some in it, which I, I really don't care if a book has romance in it. I'm not one of them girlies, like... Just give me the book and I'll take it at face value. But this one does seem really good. Next we have The Story Life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zedden. And I really like Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. So I should like this one. And it's very, very short. We'll, we'll be done with this in a few days. So this one says, uh, AJ Fickery's life is not at all what he expected it to be. He lives alone. His bookstore has experienced the worst sales in its history. And now his prized possession of... A rare collection of Poe poems has been stolen. But when a mysterious package arrives at the bookstore, its unexpected arrival gives Fickery the chance to make his life over and see everything anew. This book, I think I'm going to like. So I do, I like literature. I love like English literature. And he owns a bookstore. And he lives alone. So something's gonna happen and somebody's gonna why am I talking like that? Somebody's gonna come into his life and help him discover. It. I think this is what I think. Don't quote me, don't quote me, because I told you I'm wrong a lot. Next we have the Heaven Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. And I made the mistake of ordering the paperback. And I didn't know they didn't have a paperback, and the paperback was large print, so which is good because I am essentially blind. Like, so, I mean, it worked out. So this one says, in 1972, when workers in Pottstown, Pennsylvania were digging the foundations for a new housing development, the last thing they expected to uncover was a human skeleton. Who the skeleton was and how it got buried there were just two of the long held secrets that had been kept for decades by the residents of Chicken Hill and the dilapidated neighborhood where immigrant Jews and African Americans lived side by side, sharing their ambitions and sorrows. Chicken Hill was where Moshe and Chona Ludlow lived when Chana, when Chona ran the Heaven and Earth grocery store, which served the neighborhood's quirky collection of blacks and European immigrants, helped by her husband, Moshe, a Romanian born theater owner who integrated the town's first dance hall when the state came looking for a deaf black child claiming that the boy needed to be institutionalized chicken hills residents roused by chona's kindness and the courage of a local black worker named nate timblin banded together to keep the boy safe as the novel unfolds it becomes clear how much the people of chicken hill have to tr struggle to survive at the margins of white christian american and how damaging bigotry hypocrisy and deceit can be to a community when the truth is revealed about the skeleton of the boy and the part of the town's establishment played in both mcbride shows us that it is love and community heaven and earth that ultimately sustain us so i think this is kind of going to be like four treasures of the sky and i'm going to love it it seems like it is a heavy topic which i'm okay with i, I know going into it so i'm kind of prepared so i'm very excited for this one i'm reading this one with my friend kendall and kendall when you see this we need to make a video together i don't know what we're gonna do but 
Next, we have The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. I've not read a bad book by her, so I'm very excited for this one. If Abby Jimenez has a 1,000 fans, I am one of them. If she has 10 fans, I am also one of them. If she has zero fans, I am dead, okay? Next, so we have Kirsten Peterson doesn't do drama. Will fight to the death for her friends and has no room in her life for guys who just don't get her. She's also keeping a big secret, facing a medically necessary procedure that will make it impossible for her to have children. Planning her best friend's wedding is bittersweet for Kristen, especially when she meets the best man, Josh Copeland. He's funny, sexy, never offended by her mild, wide streak of sarcasm, and always one chicken enchilada ahead of her hangry. Even her dog, Stuntman Mike, adores him. The only catch, Josh wants a big family someday. Kirsten knows he'd be better off with someone else, but as her attraction grows, it's harder and harder to keep him at arm's length. The friend zone will have you laughing at one moment and grabbing for tissues the next as it tackles the reality of infertility and loss and with wit, heart, and a lot of sass. I think this this is going to be either a four star or a five star read. I, I'm going to do predictions next. I, just hold, just hold, just hold. But I am very excited for this one. I saw Ava Jules just finished reading this and she really liked it, so. Okay, now it's time for my predictions. Four or five star? Four or five stars? Four or five stars? Three or four stars, maybe. It might go up, I don't know. I don't do half ratings, by the way. That's that's not what I do. That's not what I do. Um, maybe three stars, four, three, three stars, three or four stars, leaning towards three at the moment. Next, we have Into the Dark, and this is going to be a five or six star read for me. And I know this because I do. And that's all the justification I need. It is. But those are all the books that I want to read in the month of March. And I am going to plan a few videos this month. Like, I'm actually going to do it because I only posted once in February, which was my February wrap up. Yeah, that's bad. So I am going to do a birthday bookstore, like, you know, shopping spree, I guess. I'm going to treat myself to some books because... I'm moving soon. I will have a lot more room because right now all I have is this book cart and I also have like two stacks of books over here by my bed and I need to have more room. So I'm going to order the Nathan James bookcases and they're going to be so cute. Um, and then I'm going to do a realistic reading week in my life. I started it this morning and I think if this sticks, I will do this maybe multiple times a month I don't know about every week because it could get repetitive and I'll get tired of filming it and I don't want to get tired of reading I mean you know like I don't get in slumps often but I feel like that could put me in one because I'm like pressuring myself to finish books but they're all it's like realistic reading week so it's gonna be really like low stress um the only thing is I just have to remember to pick up the freaking camera but I also might want to do an organizing my book cart video. I don't know, this month, next month. I don't know. But stick around if you want to watch those. Thank you for watching this video. I am glad you stayed this long because I talk a lot. And I'm sorry. So like and subscribe if you want to see my face again. And all of these reviews because they are coming very soon. And I will see you guys in the next one.